Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and once again, we are dealing with staff tool strategies. Today is going to be fun. We're going to look at staff name and group name labeling in a unique way. Uh, I'm going to show you some alternate ways to do some things that may be common that, uh, you know, Finale is not going to set up for you out of the box. First of all, all of these instruments are just the way that Finale does this um, for the most part. I did change the horns here to say 1-3, um, but this is how Finale will label them, and this is perfectly acceptable. This is a great way to do this. I, I'm not disparaging this at all, but there are some alternate ways to do this, and I just wanted to show you a few of them. So first of all, let's start up here with my flutes. You see I've got flute one and two, but what I'm going to try and do here is just label one here, two here, and then in the center I want to put flutes. That's a common way of doing this as well. So let's look at how we're going to do that. So I'm going to go into the score manager, and for both of the flute parts, the way I'm going to do this is I'm actually going to edit the full and abbreviated names by just deleting them so that they're blank. And same thing with the abbreviated name here. And we'll do that for flute two as well. Now, when you do this and leave the auto number style checked for both of these staffs, as you see, they're still checked here, what you'll end up with is a name that just reads one and two. And when you click out of here, you'll see that that's all you'll get is one and two. So the next, next task is actually putting the word flutes in the middle of it. And as you probably know by now, um, there is a subgroup for the flutes. It's this little tiny square bracket here. And uh, any group can have a group name. A lot of them don't, um, but you can add one if you want to. So the trick is to get into the group attributes for this, um, for this subgroup. And I find the best way to do this is to find a, a handle on that little sub bracket and just double click it and that brings you directly to the uh, subgroup that uh, encompasses, in this case now, staff uh, one and staff two, as it's called. And so all we're gonna do here is just edit the gr full group name and we're gonna call it flutes, right? And for the abbreviated name, we're gonna call it FLS. Easy enough. Now the positioning, I think the positioning will probably be okay as is, but let's just click okay and see for sure. Yeah, it's not so bad. Uh, if you wanted to, you could move that a little bit further to the left, but uh, you know, just the way it sets is not so bad. And now you have flutes with one and two here, and the abbreviated names will look the same, FLS with the one and two. Uh, so that's one way to do that. Now, if we wanted to, we could actually type this, uh, this flutes marking vertically. So let's go ahead and edit this uh, flutes group here. And instead of writing flutes like this, what I'm gonna do is, is F return, L, return, U, return, T, return, E, return, S, so that it's typed vertically, and we'll click OK. Now, when you do this, you might want to go into the position just for purposes of the justification. If you can kind of see that, uh, you know, everything's right justified, so if the letters are a little bit wider like the U is, it's going to not, the letters are not going to be centered, right? Uh, so the best way to do this is choose the center justify, not the right justify. Even though you're aligning right, that's totally fine. Just choose the center justify. And uh, let's see if this position is right. We may have to move this a little bit to the left. Let's just go ahead and do that. And see what that looks like. Yeah. So there you go. Now there's one other thing that you can do if you want, because the letters are a little bit spread out when you do it like this. There's an option here when you edit the text, you can select them all, and there's an option for line spacing. So line spacing will affect how, uh, how far apart the letters are from each line. So, you know, in this case, it's set to single 100%, but we could do something like 80% here, and you'll see that what that will do is it will kind of scrunch the letters in a little bit closer together. So, so that's another way of doing this, typing it vertically. Of course, I would have to do the same for here if I wanted to, or actually I could leave it like that, it doesn't matter. Now, what's almost impossible is typing this word um, uh, sideways. Uh, it can't be done with the group names or the staff names. Um, I say almost impossible because there really is only one way to do this, and I'm just going to, uh, for the time being, just not show the group names here so I can set this up. The only tool in Finale that will let you put text sideways is the Smart Shape tool. So I'm going to fake a marking here with a Smart Shape, and I've already set this up. I'm just going to show you. I've got a flutes marking here, and I'm just going to show you what it looks like. This is a line style solid with zero thickness, and and the center full uh, text is just flutes at uh, size 18, I believe. And that's all you need. The important thing is it's solid thickness zero. That will make the line disappear. And the other important thing is to make sure that this does not 
it, this horizontal is not checked, all right? And we click OK, and we can use that smart line. And to do that, just double click and drag. And you keep dragging until you see the, uh, the name. And now you can see that it can be put on an angle. So the tricky thing is just making it, getting it vertical. Uh, there's no, and then you have to redraw sometimes. Um, there's no guidance for it actually being vertical. So you're going to have to eye it. And then, of course, you're just going to have to drag it into place. Now, there's some problems with this because, you know, this is going to be attached to this point in the measure. So if I were to do something like change the key, um, you're going to see that marking move because it's being attached here, but the extra sharps are pushing this point further to the right. So um, the other issue is that if you actually start expanding the staffs, that's not going to move and it's not going to stay centered between the staffs. So my recommendation, if you really want to do this, is make sure that you do this at the very end of the process after everything's already done, because once you start moving things around, you're going to have to, you know, re-maneuver these into place. But uh, but that's how you would do this. This is the only way to get sideways typed text. It's with the um, is with a smart line like that. Now let's look at another situation here. So here I've got my horn parts in F, one, three, two, four. Uh, it's pretty common to see like one on top of three, two on top of four, and then the horn in F sort of centered on the numbers between one and one and three. Um, it's kind of hard to do that with a staff label. And uh, so I'm going to show you kind of a, a workaround, a better workaround for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the score manager and deal with these horn parts. And I'm actually going to call this not horn in F13. I'm just going to call it one return three. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to do the same thing for the abbreviated name one return three. Then I'm going to go down to horn two and four. We'll call this two return four. Same thing with the abbreviated two return four. All right. And now this should give us. And again, you do want to make sure that the auto number style here is unchecked because we're doing something unique with the numbering. So that's why that's unchecked. And you go down here, and now you'll see the uh, the markings the way you want it. However, it's not centered correctly. Again, this is because the uh, the vertical position is pinned off the top line of the staff, which is always odd to me, but uh, that's how it works. So we are going to have to adjust this by going into the staff attributes and adjust the full staff name position. And we'll just shift drag this up a little bit to there. And I can see if I can remember that number, 0 0.04. And we can do the same for the abbreviated name, 0 0.04. Oh, it was positive 0 0.4, 0 0.04, I think, right? There we go. And then we have to do that for the 2.4 staff, positive 0 0.04. And the abbreviated. 0 0.04, and that should set up correctly. So now the, the numbers are sort of centered on the staff, and it will look that way for the abbreviated names as well. So then what we want to have is the horn and F kind of centered here and the horn and F centered here. Now, how would you do this? Well, one thing about groups is that you can have a group on a single staff, and that's exactly what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to, with the staff tool, I'm going to select the entire uh, horn one three parts, and I'm going to go to staff, groups and brackets, add. All right. Now the key here is that don't add a bracket. Just use none for the bracket. Make sure the hide normally through staves. This is all checked the way it needs to be. And then show group name is also selected here. And here we're going to um, call this horn in F. And the abbreviated name we'll call horn. And I think we also need to probably change the position to get a little bit further left. So instead of uh, negative 0.25, I think negative 0.3 will work a little bit better. And that will have to be for uh, both uh, the groups, or both the um, full and abbreviated names. And there you have it. You have your horn and F. And just I'll do it very quickly here on the second staff so you can see this again. So groups and brackets add. Show group name, yes, horn and F. Position, negative 0.3. Uh, abbreviated name, just HN period. Position, uh, horizontal, negative 0.3. And that should do it. So now you can see that I've got the horn and F sort of centered on the staff, the 1 and 3 splitting center. Again, you're kind of uh, finagling this because you're using a group name and a staff name to create this. And then also you'll see that uh, the abbreviated names will look the same way as well. So that's how you would do that.
Again, if you wanted to, you could also do horns in F in the center and just uh, you know use that um, that subgroup uh, and put the the name there, just the way that I showed you before in the flute. So that's also another option, but this is just a, a an alternative to that. Another thing that might be handy to do is when we deal with percussion, sometimes in the staff name, they'll list the actual names that the percussion is playing right in the staff name. Well, we can do that in the score manager just pretty simply. So I'm going to go to my percussion staff here. I'm going to edit the full name, and I'm just going to start putting in instruments. Snare drum, bass drum, sus, cymbal, uh, triangle, and etc. And you can list this however you want, however many instruments you need. And then for me, the trick to this is you can actually make these texts smaller. So leave the percussion nice and big like that, but then choose, just select the instruments themselves and go to uh, text and size. We'll put this at 10 point instead of 14 so that they get a little bit smaller like that and click OK. And what you'll see is that you'll get your percussion label with all the instruments. Now, it will not be centered, which, of course, is the problem. Uh, so we can always just drag that up. And, of course, doing this will um, change the position in the staff attributes as well. So full staff name position is now unique. And uh, so, yeah, so there you go. Now, the kind of the cool thing about this is that when you change the name in the score manager like that, it also updates the part. So now I'm going to go into my edit parts, and you're going to see this long name for the percussion, which is totally fine. This list is not, you know, printed anywhere. It's fine that it looks like that. But when we go to this part, what's really neat is that now the part name has all those instruments listed for you. So it's kind of a, a, handy, a handy thing to do there. The issue, however, is that it will also uh, apply on all of the continuations if you're using them. And actually, I forgot to apply this to the rest of the score. I'll just fix this real quick. Page range instead of single page. Um, you'll see that the instrument list is probably not what you want to do. There's a nifty little trick here that I sometimes do. If you double click the text block here and um, get your cursor kind of to a point, you'll see it turn into sort of a double arrow up and down and then just grab that and click and drag. And what you're doing, it's hard to see, I went too far, is you're suppressing the height of that um, that text block, which means that it's not it's going to make the rest of the text invisible. It's not invisible, but it's just it's just out of the the range of the text block. So essentially, what you're doing is you're able to have this text block have the correct um, listing here, but then the one that's applied to the second page and onward um, will only show the percussion. All right, so there's a few different ways to uh, deal with instruments in an orchestral score. The other thing I wanted to show you is uh, some unique things that can be done with choral scores. Now, I have this other file here that's set up in a unique way. I've got a whole bunch of different vocal instruments, and this is actually reminiscent of... Uh, of um, uh, Bernstein's Mass, actually, I love that piece, where you have soloists, which normally would not get a bracket, by the way, and then you have two different choirs here. And uh, in, ma in the Mass, it's the street chorus and the concert chorus in certain spots, so that's why I set it up like this. And uh, so all of these instruments, all of these voices, uh, I just entered in the score manager, and this is how Finale sets them up with the auto numbering and everything. So what you'll see is soprano one, alto one, tenor one, baritone with no number, because this is the only time I'm using baritone as an instrument. But then I get soprano two, alto two, tenor two, bass one, because this is the first instance of the bass. So you can see that the numbers are, are not exactly uh, the way that I want it. And in fact, I wouldn't want to number um, any of these any of the first eight instruments at all and I would only want to start numbering in the uh, the concert chorus here so let's see how we can do this so I'm going to go into the score manager here and it's pretty simple the first thing I want to do for these first four voices is just uncheck the auto number style just like that and then while I'm here the other thing I want to do is change this so that it says soprano solo for all these instruments, alto solo, hang with me here while I do this, tenor solo, oops, there we go, baritone solo, there we go. So now they say the soprano solo, alto tenor, baritone solo, and there's no numbers, so let's check the score, see what we're dealing with so far. So, so far, so good. That's kind of exactly what I want. The next thing is that I don't want this chorus to have numbers here at all. So again, this is simply a matter of going into here and just unchecking the auto number style for these four voices. 
and in this case it will show the soprano alto tenor bass without the numbers and then in the next chorus because these auto number styles are still engaged uh, it's going to start counting with this soprano so now this looks appropriate you definitely want to see soprano one and two alto one and two etc uh, through bass one and two so that's sort of how i would do that again this file was completely set up uh, using the, the uh, score manager the only thing that i did was uh, futz with the groups a little bit so that the soloists do not have a, a group but the uh, the street chorus and the concert chorus do have a group. And then the other thing that we can do here, uh, similar to what I was doing in the previous file, is we can set up group names to indicate which chorus is doing, or which uh, staffs are which chorus. So I'm just going to double click in here to get to the group attributes for this uh, chorus, which is the soprano through bass staffs, right? And I'm going to call this street chorus. All right, and I'm putting it on two lines just because, uh, you know, on one line it would probably go off to the left too far. And we're going to click OK. And I'm not going to do that for the uh, the continuations or the abbreviated names. I'm just going to do that for the, for the full group name. And I'm going to deal with the positioning a little bit. And what I'm going to do here is just for fun, I'm going to do the first full expand single word so that the left and right edges will, will line up. And I'm going to change the, um, let's change the, the uh, distance here to negative point, actually make, make it negative point 0.9. You know, the other thing I should probably do is change the size of this. Maybe this should be a little bit bigger. Let's make it 18. Let's see what that looks like. So there you go. So now you see the street course. And we can do the same thing down here. Now sometimes with these groups, when you have subgroups, it's hard to find the right handle. Yep, soprano 1 through bass 2. We'll call this... Concert chorus. Again, let's do this at 18. And then we'll go to position, uh, negative 0.7. Uh, full, forced full, expand word. Let's see what that looks like. And there it is. So you can kind of see, oops, that should have been 0.9, right? Not 0.7. Negative 0.9. There we go. Uh, so now you can see that you have these uh, choruses clearly marked. And of course, I could do the other thing that I showed you with the uh, flutes with these names if we want. Just bear with me a second because this is kind of fun. <laughs> S-T-R-E-E-T-C-H-O-R-U-S. -E -E All right. And again, I'm just going to do the line spacing so that's a little bit tighter. 80%. Okay. Uh, positioning should be the same, I believe. Let's see if that works. Yep. So now we have that street chorus running uh, vertical. And uh, actually, let's do it here on the concert chorus just for the heck of it. C O N C E R T. Now, because the concert course covers more um, staffs here, I could actually expand the uh, line spacing so that it's wider. So let's do something silly like 140 so that it gets really wide. Make sure our positioning is good. Actually, this is, probably should be centered, not... There we go. And obviously, you can see that it's a little bit too close, so we can always just drag this over. Let's drag this one over a little bit. Oops, I grabbed both of them. There we go. So you can see that you can do some you know, unique things with uh, the group names. And of course, the uh, advantage of the group names is that it will actually center on the group. So even if you start expanding the uh, staffs here, you'll see that the, uh, the, the group name will remain centered with the, uh, the group itself, which is great. So yeah, so there's some uh, unique ideas for uh, you know creating different type of staff labels, group labels, and all that stuff. Um, a few different ways to do it in uh, you know orchestral scores, choral scores. Uh, so yeah, so there you go. So I hope this has helped. This has been the last thing I'm going to talk about with uh, staff names. And uh, the next thing we're going to deal with in the staff tool strategies videos is hiding staffs, which is gets interesting. So. I'm looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, so there you go. My name is Jason. Don't forget to subscribe. Really appreciate it. And I will see you soon on the next video.